My name's Esther Ranson. I came up with the idea of Child Line. Then I came up with a similar idea for older people called the Silver Line. This is Hampstead Heath, where I used to walk with my family every weekend. I love Hampstead, always had done. Both Child Line and the Silver Line were launched by the BBC and it was tremendously effective in getting our phone number across. <laughs> but we had to break rules in order to get the Silver Line number to the public, which is crazy. There weren't any rules when Child Line was launched in 1986. Things change. But essentially, I think the BBC hasn't changed a great deal. That's where I used to work in the radio. And that is now called Old Broadcasting House because there is this extraordinary palace which has been built in the last few years, which is New Broadcasting House. There's no reason why it should exist and become the major broadcaster in the world, but that's what it is. And uh, I love it. It's completely crazy, but it works. I had a meeting myself with the current head of values not long ago, talking about the way the media treat charities, which isn't always, I think, fair. But do you see it as a problem on both sides, the fact that charities aren't equipped to deal with the media as well as the media going after them? It has become an uneasy relationship, which is a shame. Broadcasting is by far the most effective way to make your clients, be they children or old people, aware of the service you're providing. We talked about it on That's Life. Because we had so many children watching the programme, we realised that there might be children who were themselves suffering cruelty or neglect. And therefore we ought to open helplines, which we did for 48 hours. And they were jammed with children disclosing abuse that they'd not been able to talk about ever before. The fact that they were told it wasn't their fault. It was immediately clear to me that this was more important than anything else I'd ever done. Child I merged with the NSPCC in 2006. And that has enabled us to become self-sustaining. It's enabled us to launch our online service. It's been terrific. And in that building is our London base, where we are answering children day and night. A lot of the little charities that come and talk to me um, asking me for help. Niche services put together by people who understand the need for the service but don't have anyone on their board with any clout in terms of fundraising or communications or marketing or networking and they desperately need it. So I would say that people who are working in financial sectors, people are working in advertising and marketing, ought to give back by joining the boards of small charities and giving them professional advice. When I wrote about my own feelings having lost my husband and living alone for the first time and discovered that it struck a chord with hundreds of readers, I then wondered whether a helpline might be useful for the older generation as well. With a lot of help from Comic Relief and the Big Lottery, we set up the Silver Line, which in two years had 800,000 calls. We have 3,000 volunteers who are trained befrienders. We have, I think, made a difference to a lot of older people's lives who otherwise have nobody else they can talk to. I think we need to be aware that older people are a fantastic resource. The voluntary sector would collapse without them. We are the fundraisers. We are the envelope stuffers, we are the collection box shakers. As long as we recognise that there's a real upside to our ageing population, then we can also discuss the downside and how best to solve some of the problems.